Wolf Girl by Ando, Into the Wild, Chapter 1. Illustrations by Jeremy Lay. Additional illustrations by Annie G. For Summer, Leon, Luke and Xavier. And for Ben and Freddie, a bunch of awesome kids. Um, for Tess, Adventure Despite Adversity. Love your adventurer buddy, Jem. One, into the night. Gwen, wake up, wake up now. Mum was shaking me hard, too hard. Her knuckles were white as she gripped my shoulders. I felt like crying out, but I didn't. Maybe because Mum's voice was filled with fear. Instead, I did as I was told. I sat up. We have to move fast, they're coming. I jumped out of bed and pulled on some clothes. It was still dark, but everyone was up. Outside, I could hear neighbours screaming, horns beeping, people crying. I followed Mum to the kitchen and watched her tip the entire contents of my school bag onto the floor. My tin pencil case clanged open, but Mum didn't even seem to care. I wanted to complain, but I was too afraid. Mum then filled up my bag with food. Behind her, I saw Dad go out the front door with a heavy load of suitcases. Take this to your father, Mum said, handing me my school bag. I ran outside to find Dad shoving cases into the car. I gave him my school bag and he flung it on top of a pile in the boot. Stay calm, Gwen, he told me, although he didn't sound calm himself. He turned back to the house. Come on, he muttered, hurry up. A car blared its horn, then swerved around a van and sped away. Mum and my big sister Kate emerged from the house and ran towards our car. It was strange though, Mum didn't even stop to shut the front door. Everyone in, Dad shouted. Kate and I were worried because Dad rarely raised his voice. We piled into the car and took off into the night. As we drove out of town, the road ahead was packed with cars. Cars that were full of bags, full of people, full of kids. Some younger than me, some older. All staring out their windows. It was like we were all going on a big group holiday. Except no one was smiling. We sped along with the other cars for what seemed like a very long time. Later, the road led into a forest, winding through banks of shadowy trees. Where are we going, Mum? I finally asked. Girls, try to close your eyes, Mum replied, her voice looked shaky. Have a little rest. Why did we have to leave? Kate asked. Kate had just turned 11 and had always been curious about everything. Mum didn't answer. I looked across at Kate, who shrugged. Soon Kate piped up again. Can we play that game where you think of countries beginning with different letters? Not now, Kate, said Mum. I was relieved. I hated that game. The last time we played it, I'd taken ages to think of a country starting with B. I wasn't sure if Belgium was a country or a city. Afterwards, Dad had said to me, Gwen, sweetheart, you need to trust your instincts more. He was always saying that to me. Follow your instincts. As I watched Dad driving the car now, though, he seemed really unsure. Kate must have sensed it too, because she didn't ask any more questions for the rest of the trip. Instead, we all sat in silence as we drove for hours, deep into the forest, down an unfamiliar road that seemed to go on forever. I stared out the window and saw nothing but trees on both sides for miles and miles. Suddenly, I heard a distant explosion. What was that? I said. Mum looked across at Dad. I heard it again, this time a little louder. Dad stepped hard on the accelerator and the car lurched forward at an even greater speed. Dad, you're going too fast, Kate screeched. Shush, it's fine, snapped Dad. Normally really calm, Dad's tone did nothing to reassure us. Then after a moment, Dad turned around to look at Kate. I'm sorry, honey, we just have to... Slam! We'd run right into the back of a truck. I hit my head against the back of Dad's seat. Mum screamed. Kate started crying. Is everyone all right? croaked Dad. He turned around to check on us and we nodded frantically. In front of us were what looked like a hundred cars, all stopped, all lined up along the road which wound up a dark mountain. We should have left earlier, cried Mum, her face white. 
In the distance, we could hear a series of thunderous cracking sounds. Everyone out of the car now, Dad shouted. Kate and I froze. We didn't know what to do. I stared through our cracked windscreen at a big blue moon on the back of the truck we'd just crashed into. Mum also sat there, quiet and still, while Dad jumped out of the car and ran around the back to drag our things out of the boot. The thundering noises grew louder. Mum turned to us, her face red and wet with tears. Girls, Mummy loves you very much. Are you listening to me? She leant into the back and shook my shoulder. Listen to me, Gwen. I need you both to run. Mummy and Daddy will be right behind you, but you must run and run and not look back. Even if we don't keep up, you just keep running. You hear me? Kate and I stared at her. You hear me, girls? She was yelling now. Promise me, girls. Promise me. You'll keep going. Okay, I cried. Dad opened the door and pulled me and Kate out. He threw us our school bags and gave us each a shove. Go! We started running. Other families were running now too. All these families, just like ours, scrambling out of their cars, clutching whatever they could carry, and running as fast as they could over the grassy field that lay between the cars and the tree canopy beyond. I glanced over my shoulder. Dad was lugging two suitcases and Mum clutched a small pack to her chest, gripping Kate's hand as she ran. The field ahead was filled with clover, and for a moment a small part of me wondered whether there was one with four leaves for luck. Then I heard a high-pitched sound. It got louder and louder as the shadow of a plane fell over us. Then suddenly, boom! A massive explosion sent us all slamming to the ground. Smoke filled the air. Run, cried Dad as he struggled to his feet. Mum was helping Kate, who had fallen over. Run, Gwen, keep going, you promised. Run! Without even thinking, I started to run again. I looked back to see if my family was behind me, but couldn't make them out amongst the swelling smoke. I wanted to stop and go back, but all I could hear was Mum's voice begging me to keep going. Something inside me told me to do as she said. Maybe this was the instinct Dad always told me to follow. So that's what I did. I ran and ran, leaping over clumps of grass through the smoky field. I usually loved running. Ever since I was a little girl, I would run in the fields behind our home, sprinting past the cows and the horses. Sometimes I'd even run with Dad through the woods. He was a good runner too, and I loved how he always pretended to lose when he raced me. There were strange sounds in the air now, people crying, the smell of smoke. When I reached the tree line and plunged into the forest, a branch snagged my sleeve, but I snapped past it. I had to slow though, as the light from the road disappeared and the world darkened. Making my way through the forest, the shadowy trees seemed to grow taller until they loomed all around me. But still I ran, spurred on by the promise I'd made mum and the sound of explosions behind me. At last, the sounds started to fade. I was also getting tired, very, very tired. During our runs, Dad had always taught me to breathe deeply when exhaustion was setting in. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, he'd say. Focus on where your feet land. I don't know how long I ran for, but his words echoed in my head with every step. It felt like hours before I noticed my hands were shaking and everything around me was starting to spin. That's when I slipped and hit my head on a rock. 